go from here? Hi, this is Nicole from Illuminated Movements here to talk about the new moon in Virgo happening on September the 14th or 15th, depending on where you live in the world. This new moon is a big one. It's got a really interesting energy and it's not necessarily like our typical new moons. We have some big, intense energy coming through from Pluto squaring the nodes as it has been for most of this year. This new moon also is opposing Neptune in Pisces, bringing a lot of energy towards our visioning and our dreams. And it's also part of a grand trine, a grand earth trine to be specific, between Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. So with all that big energy, we've got a lot to talk about today. Without further ado, I'm going to pull up my screen. And we'll take a look at what the chart looks like for now. So taking a look at the chart for this new moon happening at 6.39 p.m. on September the 14th, if you happen to be on Pacific Standard Time, it'll happen on the 15th if you live a little bit further over towards Europe, Asia, and the other side of the world. So looking at our new moon. So go ahead and circle that new moon. It's over on the right side of the screen. Here we have the sun and we have the moon in the beautiful sign of Virgo. So what is Virgo about? Virgo for us represents being able to look at something and analyze it and separate it and integrate it so that we can ultimately make things better. It's a really beautiful healing sign in this way. So Virgo, Virgo is able to say, take this, leave that, move this over here, bring this over here. And that's a really, really, really important energy to have. I think a lot of people underestimate just how important Virgo actually is in our day-to-day -day life because it's taking care of the details, right? There's a little saying about that. The devil is in the details, the stuff when we're not paying attention that can catch up to us. So Virgo, new moon, giving us a really strong opportunity to take a look at our day-to-day -day life and say, is this working? Is this not working? Then going into a bigger picture mode, or maybe even a new project that you're trying to create, one that you're already in, really just depends on what's happening for you in your life. Virgo allows us to stop and pause and take stock of where we are now. And that's exactly what this new moon is asking. The Virgo new moon marks the halfway point in the astrological year. Because in the, astro <clears throat> the astrological calendar, it's Aries that begins the year and Pisces that ends it. So we have that late March start and a mid-March finish. Here we are in September at that halfway point. And again, now that we're halfway through the year, what do we have now? Where are we now? And more importantly, where do we want to go? So our friend Virgo helping us sift and sort and see what do we keep? What do we move on from? Really, really important there. Now these earth sign planets, that's these green ones here. We've got Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn are the earth planets. They're all concerned with things that we do in the material realm, in the 3D realm. Things like our physical body, uh, the computer that I'm working on, all the things that you can touch, taste, smell, you know, hear, interact with things that are, you know, for all intents and purposes, solid, we'll say. <laughs> okay. And so they also rule food. They rule the physical earth. They rule in a sense, like physical work. I know we can associate that with some of the other signs, but really it's these earth signs that get down and get stuff done in a physical way. So with this Virgo energy here, it's creating energy. I'm going to draw a line down over this big blue line here with a triangle. 
over to Taurus, our friend Uranus, which I just circled here in Taurus, where it's been since 2018. So Uranus is one of the outer planets. All the planets that are past Saturn are considered the outer planets. And we happen to have, which I'll get to in a moment, but we happen to have Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto all making big contacts with this new moon. So it's part of what's giving it an extra power punch here. Going back to Uranus, Uranus is the planet of liberation. It's what's breaking us free. It's what allows us to look at something and say, I need to move on. I need to break out of this old pattern. I need to go, right? And in a lot of ways, Uranus is like our rocket fuel. It is going to take us to heights we never thought we could go to if we listen to what it has to say. Now, when we don't listen to that Uranian impulse, that energy to go do something new, to break free of something, to be liberated in something, to actualize our genius with something, to connect with the right groups, right? Because Uranus also has to do a lot with audience. Who are we sharing our genius with? Because if we share who we are, our, you know, creative little messy, uh, bottom of the toaster, weirdo selves with the wrong people, well, you know, it can be a little bit of a bummer, <laughs> right? We can get shamed or looked down upon or told that we're weird or crazy or whatever. But you get with the right people, the right people who get you, and they see you as brilliant. They see all those quirks as the best thing ever. So really, we have to talk about audience and who you're speaking with, who you're hanging around, what you're engaging in when we talk about Uranus, anytime we talk about Uranus. So Uranus and Taurus, been there again since 2018, making that beautiful trine, meaning that the energy is flowing together between this new moon in Virgo and that Uranus and Taurus energy. So what does Uranus want? Well, Uranus wants to move us forward. As I said, it's our rocket fuel. So to get to somewhere new, we have to leave something behind. It's a law of physics. It's a universal law. What are you holding on to that needs to be left behind? When we hold on to things too long, Part of Uranus's job is to shake things up or to break us loose. And it's not always comfortable because Uranus really doesn't care about your feelings. Okay. Uranus is like that friend that says, all right, get up. It's time to leave the party. But they're right. Yeah. They're just maybe not the friend that's going to come and say, oh my gosh. Yeah. Maybe we should think about sort of soon leaving. Uranus is like, got to go. Okay. So that's Uranus. We all need a friend like that. We all need a friend like that. And there are places and spaces where we have got to get up and go. And a lot of this has had to do with places and spaces where we have not felt we are worthy. Right. You can see that in socials or in the zeitgeist that people are talking about self-worth. People are changing their values. People are questioning what is worth it and what is not. It's not totally surprising on the world stage, or at least in Western countries, the United States, California, where I live. So I'm going to speak more from that perspective because that's my lived experience is massive inflation, right? You go to the grocery store, which the earth signs also have to do with, with food. Um, and it's like, 10, $12 for butter. And that's kind of crazy. So looking at, is that valuable? People changing their work schedules saying, you know what? I no longer want to work as a faceless drone in a corporation that doesn't give a shit about me. And that's doing terrible things while they're smiling in my face and telling me that we're family not happening anymore. So we've got a lot of this really big energy happening in Taurus and people are rediscovering, or at least if they're doing the work, right, um, their own value, getting back in touch with that. And that's really, really important. And so for part of this new moon, it's asking you to take a look at that and say, okay, what do I value now? 
What is worth it now? Again, what do I need to keep and what do I need to leave behind? Virgo is so great at that. Virgo also has to do with our health. So Taurus does as well, but Virgo about the systems of assimilation in our body, right? And so often when we're feeling out of sorts or feeling out of place, there's something going on in our life that's also reflecting that we're out of balance, whether it's our food diet, whether it's our news diet, whether it's our friend diet, whether it's our people we're hanging out with diet, whether it's our job diet, our family diet, whatever it is, what are we consuming? So that's the other thing to take a look at is what are you consuming? The more good stuff, the more healthy stuff, the more you know, things that are empowering stuff, the better. And you can really feel the difference. So if you need to make some changes in your physical diet or your diet, again, according to anything else, because it's not just what you eat, it's all the things you consume. This is a great time to do that because you're going to get a lot of help. It's going to be a little bit easier. Now, the final earth sign here is Pluto, Pluto and Capricorn. So we've got... <clears throat> Pluto here, it moved earlier this year in March into the sign of Aquarius. Okay. And then it went back. Okay. So Pluto right now is in retrograde. Remember retrogrades, if you've seen my video on retrogrades are nothing to be feared. There is nothing bad here. Nothing is going to harm you. No planet is ever harming you. But what it's asking us to do is to go back and look at Capricorn things again. So what the heck are Capricorn things? Well, they have to do on a personal level with our goals, what we want to achieve, the legacies that we're trying to leave, um, our relationship to self-determination, to self-discipline, which also has to do with self-discipleship. Are we devoted to ourselves? Are we devoted to other people? Are we devoted to, you know some addiction, taking a look at those things. It also has to do with our inner authority. Capricorn has to do Saturn, its ruling planet has to do with authorities, both inner and outer. Capricorn also has to do with the structures of society because it's ruled by Saturn. So structures of society, it's laws, it's governments, all those kinds of things. So big time planet, big time energy. And it takes a long time to move around the Zodiac. So a planet like Mercury, this one over here in that right side of your screen in Virgo land takes 88 days to make one full trip around the entire Zodiac. Pluto, on the other hand, if we were to put it in days, takes 90,000, I think it's 90,520. Might be 502. Sorry, I have a little bit of number dyslexia. So sometimes I get things a little bit off, but holy cow, what a huge difference, right? Mercury changes signs every couple of months. Pluto changes signs every 10 to about 35 years, depending on the sign. So big energy, it takes a long time to move. Pluto has to do from an evolutionary perspective with our soul's growth. It has to do with our soul's evolution. It's part of our purpose of why we come in with certain soul groups. They have different themes that they're working on. And it also rules our subconscious right? Or what Jung would term shadow self. So it's not really surprising that we've heard a lot about shadow work and the shadow self, especially recently. And people are really taking a look at, you know, the under belly of themselves, these programs that we now understand run our lives. Um, Bruce Lipton, Joe Dispenza talk a lot about that. They've really been brilliant pioneers in that whole field of understanding how the mind actually works. So if you're interested in them, check them out. They're amazing. Totally changed my life in every way possible <laughs> when I started learning um, really what the subconscious actually was versus what I had been brought up to believe it was. So anyway, <clears throat> side note there. Going back to Pluto, since 2008, Pluto has been in Capricorn. And since then, we've been working on our structures in society, 
our structures in our daily lives, our structures of what we want to build, our goals, our achievements, all of those kinds of things. And we've also been working on our relationship to our inner authority versus outer authority. It's not very surprising that in many places in the world, and this is definitely the case in the United States, and again, in, in California in particular, where I'm based, that we are dealing with a lot of tyranny and authoritarianism. Pluto, again, is not trying to do anything bad to us. I want to be very, very clear because a lot of that goes around, um, especially on socials or the internet, that somehow astrology is bad and planets are bad because they do terrible things to us and they run our lives. Not true at all. What they do is they reflect energies that are part of life or that are present, again, that are helping us develop and evolve in our relationship to them. So Pluto, one of the other things that it has dominion over is power and powerlessness. So we are being given the opportunity to be shown where we feel disempowered, where we're not standing in our authenticity, where we're not standing in our truth, where we're not standing in who we really are. And so if you look at it from that perspective, it's on the empowering side, right? If you choose to flip it around and you choose to look at it as, all these things are happening to me. There's nothing I can do. This person is doing this to me. That job's doing this to me. This government is terrible. No, that government's terrible. No, it's this. Well, then it feels really awful, right? Because we lose our self-agency. We lose our personal power. And we feel like someone else is doing things to us. So it's really what Pluto is reflecting in a lot of ways. It's a much bigger conversation, but uh, in a short capsule way, that's what Pluto is reflecting to us right now. And so we really need to take a look at those areas in our life where we feel potentially disempowered or where there's a subconscious layer to our programming that's keeping us from moving forward into actualizing what it is we're trying to achieve. So we have that trine. We'll go ahead and color it in. It is that big triangle, the blue triangle in the middle. Again, all the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Trine energies are flow energies. So to take advantage of these, understand that we need to do things in the 3D, in the physical. We need to get involved in whatever it is that this new moon in Virgo is helping us to create. So remember, we are taking inventory. Where are we now? Where do we go from here? So we've got this wonderful, wonderful, amazing energy that's going to help us dive in, get our hands in and be involved in the process should we choose to do so. Remember, astrology, like anything, is a choose your adventure, right? You can choose to do this. You can choose not to. You always have free will. And this new moon, the other big thing here, I was talking earlier about the outer planets and how all three of the main of course there are more but we're going to talk about just these i don't go into trans newtonian objects because i feel like it's just too much um yeah i just feel like it's too much at this point so but i am aware they exist if some of you are more astro as savvy out there i'm wondering why i don't have them included it's there's there's a reason so anyhow <clears throat> so we're going to go over here to the left side of the screen and circling our friend Neptune. So Neptune looks like a trident, or at least it's supposed to. <laughs> and it's in that beautiful sign of Pisces where it's been since 2011. Now this new moon, actually, let me clear these out because I think I've got a little too many drawings here. So we've got our new moon. I'll go ahead and circle that just so you can see. In Virgo, Virgo and Pisces are opposite signs of each other. And we have an opposition happening with that Neptune in Pisces. So why is this significant? Well, for many reasons, but one of them is that we are being asked to create a new vision for ourselves, for our lives, for our communities, for the world at large. When Pisces comes around, it takes 165 years to make its trip all the way around the Zodiac. So we haven't seen Neptune be in Pisces since the late 1800s. And if we take a look at the dynamic between Virgo and Pisces, it really has to do with Pisces as above 
Virgo so below. So it's this beautiful energy of connection from the divine to the physical being incarnate and back again, right? Because it's not just a one-way energy. It's that constant flow back and forth. This has to do with our human anatomy in that it has to do with our spinal column, right? Our spinal fluid going up and down, how that creates our ability to move in the world creates harmony or disharmony in our own body, in our processes, in our body. And this also has to do with the chakra system, right? Of that energy being able to freely flow up and down. And if you really want to take it even further into that sacred geometry energy, it also has to do with the toroidal energy field that comes out from our physical being and from our heart. But that may be a little too much for today. So again, if that's something you want to check out, I'll try to remember to put some notes about it below. Anyhow, we're really being asked to integrate from our divine self, which I've really been thinking, you know, because the term God, the term spirituality is, is really in an interesting place right now, at least in my opinion, that there's so many rules when it comes to God because of the way it's been institutionalized. And then all of a sudden we've gotten this wonderful, amazing new not new, but resurgence of interest in spirituality. But all of a sudden that's becoming institutionalized. And it's like, you're not spiritual unless you do X, Y, and Z. And if you, you know, in any way and shape, like take part in ABC, oh, you're just, you're just not spiritual. And it's kind of silly. Um, it's really not what it's about. So I've been contemplating spirituality and I hate to even like use the word, but for lack of better words at this point, I'm going to use it really spirituality as being authenticity, like being the wonderful, amazing, divine, God sent being that we came here to be. Right. And I think really that's what Neptune and Pisces has to do with more than anything. And I think it really speaks to having our antenna, right. Our, our little internal guidance system being tuned into that energy and to those those frequencies really um we're learning more and more and more that frequency is a huge deal in the universe and not just with the universe but in our physical reality in our day-to-day -day reality and to me this new moon is so perfectly woven with that energy again as above so below so really being intentional about what you're taking in, being intentional about, again, your diet, diet, not just food, but food is a factor there. And really being intentional about how we're interacting with the world around us, how we're interacting with ourselves. Right. And so this new moon is bringing up these energies in such a big way in such a beautiful way for us to take a look at. And I, oh man, I wanted to say something and it just, bloop. a lot of the time when I, when I do these videos or even when I do my readings, I get so much information that just gets downloaded to me. And sometimes I can't, can't speak fast enough to catch up with it. So hopefully it'll come back, but if it doesn't, oh, well, so yeah, we have this beautiful, again, energy of what are we trying to create? You know, how are we doing? Those of us that have big visions, that have big dreams, that are that are working on a new chapter of our life, like how are we doing? What do we need to do to make that vision more of a reality? Or are we creating such a big vision that we're setting ourselves up for like massive failure because we've made it so overinflated, which Neptune and Pisces can do, that we don't even know where to start. And we feel that analysis paralysis that Virgo can sometimes step into when it's just got too much right? It's too much to do. It's too much to think about. Think, 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 worry, 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 not doing, doing, doing enough. So I would say to help that Neptune and Pisces energy, we've got a couple of things. We also have our friend Saturn over here, which I'm not going to talk too much about today. I'll have to do a series on that because there's a lot to say with this, but helping us Saturn is the ruling planet of our friend Pluto, which is in Capricorn. So we're getting so much help in this grand trine 
with this Neptune, with this Saturn, helping us again to kind of shut out, to be able to discern even clearer what we need and what we don't need. How to understand what is ours and what is not ours if we are absorbing things right there's so much information right now in our society there's so much to do there's so much going on there's so much happening that particularly people who are sensitive and if you're watching this video it's probably i'm speaking to you um, are taking a lot of this in and it can be overwhelming so saturn helping us to structure right our visions Pluto and Capricorn helping us to look at the structures in our life and our relationship to them. Do we feel like we are the creator of our own life? Uranus in Taurus, breaking us free from things that are holding us back, things that are stopping us from moving forward from self-imposed limitations or ones that are, that are floating around in the collective unconsciousness that we don't even realize don't belong to us right? Helping us to decondition from what we are not so that we can step in to our full power, right? Our full health, our full wealth, our full abundance in these beautiful earth signs here, which no matter if you have planets in, in your birth chart in these signs or not, it doesn't matter. Right now, these are the energies that are active. So something in your chart will be lighting up with this energy. This will be speaking to you in some way. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say earlier. Thank you. There it is. It came back. So there's a couple ways to look at this when we're trying to do something new and something big. And this is the way that I've always gotten really fast results with my students, my clients, the people that I mentor. No matter if I was doing astrology like I'm doing now, or I was doing um, movement and Pilates, or I was doing dance and choreography, it didn't matter whatever part of my life I was in, the way I got incredible results with people was inverse of how I'd been taught. It's becoming a little bit more, a lot more accepted now, but the way to get faster results is to look at what you already have. Look at what superpowers you have. Look at what strengths you have. Look at what materials you have. Look at what tools you have. Look at the connections you have, right? The network that you have, the friends that you have, the family that you have, the pets that you have, whatever it is, the angels that you're in contact with. Look at all the things you have first. That's the secret sauce. We've been taught to, indoctrinated in to, believing we have to look at what we're lacking first. It's one of the things in, in marketing that drove me nuts. I hated it. Every, every branding workshop, every marketing workshop, it didn't matter what I was, what I was taking. Everyone always said, find someone's pain point and that's where you make your money from. It makes me sick to my stomach. Thought, why? Why not look at speaking to where people feel connected, where people feel lit up? It is so much easier to be your authentic self when you just clear away what you're not. And the way you do that is by focusing on what you are. Focus on what you have. And it becomes so clear who and what you're not, right? And that's one of the beautiful things about, about astrology and, and even about human design as well. Of course, there's other modalities, but those are the two that, that I work with and have found incredibly helpful for myself and for everyone whom I serve is the clarity of seeing yourself having someone reflect these things back to you so that you can drop what you are not because you're really clear on who you are. And this new moon in Virgo is the most incredible time to do that, to see, to remember, to sort out. These are all the things I am. This is my weird superpower. This is my strength. This is my knowledge. This is 
my network, whatever it is, I can create these things. I can build structures that last, that help me, that help the people around me, right? I can break free of all these things that are not me, that are holding me back from soaring to greatness of who I really am and what I want to create. I can do all of those things because I've got big dreams. I'm here on purpose with a purpose. And that's a really incredible, beautiful thing. So this new moon in Virgo, it's so powerful. It's so incredible. These outer planets that take a long time to move, they really are bringing, and we may not see it right this second, but they're really ushering in this incredible amount of change and of power and empowerment and authenticity and joy and success. If you tap into them, you tune into them, you understand what it is they're trying to help you with. Because all the planets in astrology, they're your friends. They're not here to harm you. I promise you, no matter what anyone else says, they're not here to do th bad things to you. Even if unwanted negative things happen in your life, they're always, always, always showing you something that you can use to create something better, right? Even if you're in a hard place right now, because I know it's emotionally overwhelming for a lot of people on this planet right now. I talk to people all the time. I have done several readings. What day is it today? It's Wednesday. I've already done four readings this week alone. And I hear that. I hear all of you. I hear how much this energy is so intense. And I feel it too. Trust me, I, I feel it. <laughs> Just because you study astrology, you can speak the astrological language. You understand the planetary communications does not mean you are exempt from feeling pressure, feeling intensity, right? Being disappointed, whatever it is, feeling stuck doesn't exempt you from it. So I want to leave you with a message of it's okay to be you. It's okay to drop things that you're not anymore. It's okay to want something better. It's okay to take steps in doing that. It's okay to step into the arena and play the game. It's okay to fail while you do it. It's okay to look silly. It's okay to be uncomfortable. All of those things are okay. So take this opportunity to really step into the arena of your life, to step into the best version of yourself because you really can do it. All of this energy is so powerful. It's so beautiful. It's so perfectly on time. I hope this message was helpful for you. I hope you got value from it. This is what I specialize in when I'm doing astrological readings is helping people find their superpowers, is giving them self-knowledge and clarity on who they are so they can drop all the stuff that they've been told they have to be. And it's so much easier, it's so much lighter to move through life when you really feel this deep sense of this is who I am and this is why I'm here. I am on purpose with the purpose and it's unique to me and everyone has theirs too. So, and it's the moon of Virgo. It's amazing. I'm sending you all so much love. Mwah. Take care.